Well, hello there, Brandon Picasso here. Today, I'm gonna to be loading up my CBR650R on the truck so I can get the bike inspected. It has a salvage title, got the bike from the auction, took it apart, fixed it, and now it's time to get it back on the street. But before we do that, it has to be inspected so we can get a rebuilt title and then we can get the insurance, get a, uh, an official tag for it. Then it can be on the street. Let's get to it. Since this would be a two hour drive to get the inspection done, I needed to get the bike loaded for transport. I drive a 98 Ford Ranger that luckily doesn't sit too high, so loading bikes in the back with this wheelbase is not too bad. I know, I know what some of you are gonna say, Brandon, you need a second ramp. Another one would help, but that don't mean I need it. Clearly I got it in the back, no problems, right? Even if I might've had a slight heart attack. And maybe you did too. The bike on the back, one strap. Yeah, I know. Typically you should do it up here. Didn't have the straps. Just gonna use what I got. The fairings aren't being pulled out too much, but yeah, I'll keep that in mind for next time, but I'll put them back if I have to. Got the one in the back. Oh, I forgot to strap this freaking thing now. And we got this one. So bike ain't going nowhere. With CBR loaded in the back, now I just needed to make the trip at 5 a.m. Only it would be a very, very rainy and sketchy drive to get it there. Unfortunately, I didn't get the opportunity to pick my inspection time and date. I send in my request and the date and time gets picked and it's always Monday at 7.15 a.m. So I had to make this drive happen if I wanted this bike street legal in this storm. At the solid hour and 15 minutes of driving nine to three on that steering wheel, because any other way was too sketchy, I would finally find a break in the weather. And the bike on the back, it did not budge, it did not move, even though I did have a few moments of aquaplaning on the interstate. I couldn't see those dark spots, but I then realized I need some new windshield wipers. So yeah, there's always something. Eventually, I make it about 15 minutes before my inspection begins and the weather actually turned out to be pretty okay here. But I'd also get lucky and wouldn't have to remove the bike off the truck. It really depends on the inspector and how he feels, but with the Ranger sitting low, he was cool with it. So the bike never had to come off. And of course, the bike passed 100%, no issues. And now we have a road worthy motorcycle. Is that simple? <laughs> you don't ever no, it was good. Another one down. All right, so came through the storm, tired, but we got this bike certified. It is now legal to be on the street. It is road worthy. And uh, yeah, I didn't even have to take it off the truck. So good that the Ranger sits low. The inspector was able to step up in there and look at the VIN number. But I can't prepare to get it off. But now we're going to chit chat and uh, I guess make our way back. Once again, thank you, Jonathan. Guy's always doing great work and reliable, 100%. And coming back, I would encounter more of that storm, but luckily this time I was in no rush to get back to where I was going, so I took my sweet precious time. All right, so we made it back, and now it is time for me to get the bike off the truck, and I can kind of go over how much some of this stuff cost me. I need a freaking nap, man. Got up at 4.30. I was on the road at 5. Got there 10 minutes 
before my appointment. And the inspection only took a few minutes. It typically only takes a few minutes. And All right, let's get this thing off the truck, man. And with that, this trip is done. The one ramp worked for loading and unloading. Again, slight heart attack is always easier coming off than going on. Another successful inspection and CBR is better and it's now ready for the street. All right. Bikes back in the garage. The only difference is it is now street legal. All right, now that that's done, I can say that the bike is fully street legal. I almost turned around halfway into this drive because I was like, I'm gonna end up hydroplaning, which I did have a little aquaplaning going up there, but it's a two hour drive for me. But I do end up paying right at, I think this one cost me around $505, 400 for my fee for my guy to do it, and then 105 for taxes and what I have to pay for title fees and stuff like that. So. The bike is street legal, it's roll worthy, which means that I will get a rebuilt title in the mail. This bike is no longer salvaged, which means that I can get full coverage insurance and I can get a tag for it and ride it just like any other bike. I know some people will say, well, Brandon, why don't you do the inspection yourself? Like file that with the state. I can't, I don't have a dealer's license. Why don't I get a dealer's license? Finan financially, it just doesn't make sense. I will spend thousands just to have that license and I have to have a physical commercial lot which means that I'm going to be paying rent to somebody for that which is probably going to be at least four to five hundred dollars a month. I don't move enough bikes for that maybe at some point I will but I also like having access to somebody that is in the game all the time that's always giving me advice and somebody that I know if I need something done they're going to do it and I don't have to worry about it like we just have a good relationship and that to me matters most. So the next part of this I'm gonna do some riding on this bike. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a first impression, but the good news is you don't have to wait for that. You can click right here and check out the next episode in this series. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.